So these are the proceedings uh, of the uh, the Brussels lot doing what they were doing, and here we go. It increases the number of life years in poor health conditions. Working on effective tobacco control is thus a very honourable cause. It is also an economic necessity. The reasons for the revisions are all well known. Uh, please stop. Vielleicht könnten alle Gespräche, die gerade geführt Perhaps any conversations that are going on here could be taken outside because there are people who want to listen to the Commission to discuss the subject and anyone who wants to listen should have the opportunity to listen to the Commission without any parallel conversations going on. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for this. Uh, I think it's really helpful, um, otherwise it's difficult to follow. I think the reasons for the revisions of the Tobacco Products Directive um, are obvious. The current directive dates from 2001 and it is outdated. It needs to be brought in line with market, scientific and international developments. I would like to stress here in particular I'm not sure if the last row has heard. Is it possible to stop? Thank you very much. I would like to, to stress in particular the last aspect, the international aspect. The EU has signed an international treaty, the Framework Convention for Tobacco Control, and we have a legal obligation to implement it. We also committed as the EU to abide by the guidelines interpreting the FCT rules. The legal basis for our proposal is Article 114, Internal Market, and taking into account that we value very highly the principle of legality and obviously also the risk of legal challenges, I think we are all well advised to stick to the boundaries of Article 114. I have already touched upon the health effects. Um, sorry, that is wrong. A few words on the EU tobacco markets. The size of the market is 136 billion euros at retail level, including taxes. 89% of this is accounted for by cigarettes, 7% by roll your own tobacco. In our legislation, in our draft proposal, we, we propose to concentrate on these two product groups. They are used for smoking initiation and they account for the bulk of the market. This is, in our view, also important in terms of proportionality and to underline the balanced character of our proposal. I have already touched upon the health effects of tobacco. I would like to highlight one important data. 70% of the smokers start under the age of 18 despite all our efforts that only after the age of 18 you are allowed to buy, to buy with the exception of a few member states. And when you have reached the age of 25, it is practically, statistically improbable that you start smoking. Our proposal, therefore, proposes to concentrate on young people and on smoking initiation. Our proposal also makes sense from an economic perspective. The loss to society caused by health care costs and productivity losses equals the legitimate revenues of the tobacco industry, both approximately 35 billion, and the costs are a conservative estimate. So from an economic perspective, effective tobacco control is uh, a no-brainer. Let me now turn to the main measures. I would like to highlight five areas and I will be very brief. First, ingredients. The proposal concentrates on the use of flavors that make tobacco products more attractive. As my commissioner has said, tobacco products should look like and taste like tobacco products. In this slide, we propose a ban of products with characterizing flavors 
products like tequila. Labeling, second big area. We propose to introduce large mandatory picture warnings on the front and the back of the packages and some health warnings on the sides. Overall, 70% of the surface will be covered. Member states have the option to introduce plain packaging. We also propose to get rid of kiddie packs and lipstick packs like this one. Third area, illicit trade. We propose to, um, to introduce a tracking and tracing system for tobacco products and security features to fight illicit trade. Fourth area, oral tobacco snooze. We propose to maintain the ban on oral tobacco. We propose to maintain the status quo. Fifth area, nicotine-containing products, electronic cigarettes. We propose to subject nicotine-containing products, electronic cigarettes, to pharmaceutical legislation. A picture of the new packages. I have a few packages here if you haven't received that. In our assessment, the combination of these measures will lead to a reduction of consumption by 2%. I.e., in other words, it will save the life of 2.5 million European citizens. The adverse economic impacts on the tobacco industry and the entire supply chain are moderate, and they are further mitigated by the introduction of measures against illicit trade. In terms of employment, we expect job losses of 5,000 in the tobacco supply chain, which are more than compensated by job gains in other sectors, 8,000 new jobs will be created. This brings me to the end of my presentation, but I would, like, I would not like to conclude without say, thanking the, palm, the Parliament very warmly for treating this important file with such speed and ambition. We will do everything to support you, in particular the rapporteur and all others involved. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank, Herr Schnichels. Ich muss noch mal entschuldigen, dass gerade es hier so laut. Thank you. We, I'd like to apologize once again for the noise in the room and for you being interrupted. So now on to the rapporteur, Linda McCaffin. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. I wanted the Commission to go first because I wanted all colleagues to hear what is in the proposal and what is not in the proposal because I'm hearing lots of lobbyists who are telling you things that are not in the proposal. So I want you to understand the proposal as it stands. I've heard from some people um, these measures won't work. They won't help tackle smoking. Since public health measures started to tackle smoking, smoking prevalence has gone down in almost every country inside the European Union. The trend is down. In my country, 50 years ago, when the first measures were taken, 70% of men smoked and 40% of women. Action by public authorities has reduced that number over the years, and the prevalence rates are down. But there is one very worrying trend at the moment in Europe, and that is... The trend was going down amongst all groups. But still today, 29% of young people smoke. It's higher than the average for the other age groups. And since 2005, the World Health Organization has shown that for boys aged 15, the trend for smoking is up. And amongst girls in nine countries in Europe, the trend for smoking is up. We do not want to see a reverse in the downward trend for smoking. And therefore, I agree with the Commission. The focus of their, their legislation is to prevent, to deter young people from smoking. Now, every lobbyist I've met so far, and we had some meetings this week with industry, they, they will tell you they share, they share that. Oh, yes, they agree. They don't want to see young smokers. But then, colleagues, on the market, we find products like this one here in front of me. It's the one the Commission has. It's pink, it's little, it's small, it looks like perfume or lipstick. It's got nice slimline cigarettes inside with silver. It looks very chic. Who is that designed to attract into smoke, the smoking market? In Strasbourg last week, I bought these. These are chocolate filter papers for cigarettes. Who are these designed to attract 
to smoke? That's what we should be asking some of the people from the tobacco industry. Now, the Commission mentioned the Framework Convention. This is extremely important. This is an international treaty with binding obligations. And since it was introduced, it's now signed, signed by many different countries across the world, our governments across Europe have been starting to implement it. And so in different EU countries at the moment, governments are bringing in different measures. For example, 20 member states have minimum size packs of 20 cigarettes. We have pictorial warnings in 10 member states at the moment already. Four countries have mandatory quit measures and voluntary quit measures in nine other countries. So we have different countries doing different things at the moment. And that is why on several occasions this parliament in this in this parliamentary term has asked the Commission to come forward with this measure, as has the Council. We have asked for this measure. We want, we want our governments to implement the Framework Convention as, as they have signed up to and as the European Union itself has signed up. Now, of course, the EU must do its share, but we mustn't believe that other countries are not moving in a similar direction. Everybody's heard about Australia and the plain packaging in Australia, where the Australian government has brought in packages which look like this one. You can't see it very well, I suppose, but that's the Australian package. They won their court case against the industry. New Zealand is now bringing in similar measures, and the United Kingdom government is consulting on bringing in plain packaging and expected to announce something in May. But many other countries are going ahead on tobacco control. 63 countries worldwide have picture warnings. That includes the 10 EU member states. The United States has banned all characterizing flavors except menthol. Canada has also done that. And Brazil has banned all kinds of flavorings and additives which are not necessary for tobacco production. In Brazil, the rates of smoking have fallen dramatically from 37% to 15%. So in many Latin American countries, we're seeing tough tobacco legislation and we're seeing dramatic falls in the number of smokers. So on the proposals, I'm going to support the European Commission's proposals and where I change them, it will be only to strengthen the proposals. Um, I strongly support the ban on characterizing flavors. Why would we want to make smoking more palatable to young people? That's the question we should ask ourselves. Do we really want to do that? Strawberry, raspberry ones, they're on the market. Just go to a shop and you'll find them in, in your shops in your countries. Um, so I think we should back the Commission on that proposal. Combined picture and health warnings. I ha I've read many things from industry, tobacco industry, in the last couple of weeks saying combined health warnings don't work. But there is very, very strong, compelling evidence from public health officials in many, many different countries. Ask your health ministry. I got some information yesterday from the German Cancer Research Organization. There is very strong evidence about pictorial warnings and public health warnings. They do deter people from smoking, particularly young people, from starting to smoke for the first time. Now, the Commission is proposing that 75% of the pack is covered in combined warnings. They're not proposing plain packaging. There's a difference. They would allow some branding at the bottom of the package in the Commission proposal. The Australians don't allow that. In Australia, this is plain. Um, but the Commission proposal does allow governments who wish to to go further and bring in plain packaging. Now, for me, that is an absolute minimum in this legislation. If governments want to go further, they should be able to go further on for public health grounds. And I'd like the Commission to comment on being absolutely clear that that legislation, as it stands, would allow governments to go further than this. And I would also like colleagues to say whether we should simply, at this stage, in Parliament, ask for plain packaging. Um, you're going to hear a lot from industry that standardised packaging will mean more fraud, more um, counterfeit cigarettes. I haven't heard from one public authority that there is evidence for this. The public authorities who I've, I've got the information from all say that it's not difficult to counterfeit a current cigarette package 
And so these measures will not, there are issues about fraud and counterfeiting which we should take extremely seriously. And that is why the proposal has a whole section on security features to stop fraud and counterfeiting. But we should not believe that we will, that we will stop fraud and counterfeiting by not having bigger health warnings. The two things are not linked. And I think you should look at the evidence from public authorities about that, colleagues, because I've heard that for the last week a lot about this. On the snows, the oil, tobacco, I agree with the Commission on this. I know some colleagues from, from Sweden are concerned that if it's banned from the EU market, why should the Commission then regulate flavourings on snows? And I'd like the Commission to comment on why they are proposing to regulate the snows. Cross-border distance sales of tobacco. You can buy tobacco on the internet across borders. I haven't seen much evidence of legal cross-border um, tobacco sales, and I wonder why we therefore continue to allow cross-border sales of tobacco. Some countries do not allow this, and I'd like the Commission to talk about that. E-cigarettes. Um, these, these are new on the market since the last directive, of course, since, two, since 2001. Um, the Commission has made its proposal, which would mean that most e-cigarettes would have to be authorised as medicines. I've asked the European Parliament um, to pull together a study on all the evidence on this. Um, and so, again, my inclination is that we do need to regulate e-cigarettes. Many public health officials think they can be useful for, for people to reduce the amount of smoking cigarettes, but they must be of at least quality standards. We've had nine RAPEX alerts about e-cigarettes in the last year. We had some where there was no nicotine in the product at all, some where there was more nicotine than there should be. So um, the United States is currently developing its own laws on e-cigarettes at the moment. So we do need to regulate e-cigarettes, and again, I look forward to hearing from colleagues. There's a lot of delegate, uh, delegated acts in the proposal. I will be looking at these very carefully in the next, um, before I table my report to see which delegated acts should remain and whether there are any which are unnecessary. Um, and finally, colleagues, just to say, you're going to get a lot of lobbying about this um, in the next few weeks. You're going to hear a lot of arguments that the health warnings don't work, that bigger picture warnings don't work. But if they, if they don't work and, and, and they don't matter, why, why is there so much lobbying against them? I ask you to ask yourselves that question. Um, you're going to hear that, oh, if this goes through, we'll go to court. The tobacco industry always goes to court. So when you hear that, please understand that I'm sure we will end up, there will be court cases arising from this, and we should expect that. But the Commission has spent a lot of time researching this, and I think we should be robust about this. It is our duty to stand up for citizens, for the public. To def we do not want, I don't want to leave this Parliament next, next uh, April when we finish with thinking that we didn't do what we could here to stop a new generation of smokers from being recruited. So please, colleagues, I hope you will support this legislation. I hope that you will help us to get a very strong public, um, public health measures brought in so that we continue the downward trend in smoking across all the European Union countries. Vielen Dank, Linda. Thank you, Linda. I'm going to read out the speakers list. The Shadow Rapporteurs, Karl-Heinz Florenz, Frederick Ries. Sie vertritt Karl Schlüter, Anna Rosbach vertritt in altbewährter Form den Martin Kellermann. Standing in for Martin Kellermann, Mr. Rossi. Wir als Schattenberichterstatter. And Miss Anderson, there the Shadow Rapporteurs, and then we have Rebecca Taylor, dann Bogoslav Sonic, Peter Liese, Frau Pananova, Herr Demischmaker, Marek, Marek. Frau Jolanta Hipner, dann Jill Pagnot, äh, Kabanoch, Milan, Pavel Pock, Pilla Ayuso und Sophie Okuni. Habe ich eine Kollegin oder einen Kollegen? Have I forgotten anyone? Don't be so optimistic, uh, Peter Lisa. <laughs> we, perhaps we could cut a few. Shadow Rapporteurs, we're going to have to stick to three minutes. I know it's almost impossible with this proposal, but otherwise I'm going to have to uh, 
it's go otherwise it's going to mean that some people are not going to get to speak mr florence well it might be okay uh, with the three minutes because the Commission and Linda have said a, a lot of important things. I don't need to repeat them. I follow the, my S&D colleagues in many uh, points. We have many uh, new uh, products. We have a lot of new scientific knowledge. That's why we need a new directive and uh, 300 people die every day. Uh, in my uh, uh, country, uh, I know we're talking about small businesses and the money involved, but we have 6,000 workers in the German tobacco industry. And if you think about the uh, 300 per day, then in 20 days we've got the We've got 6,000 uh, dead smokers. Uh, that's, I'm just trying to give you an order of magnitude. If uh, in my country uh, a flight falls out of the air four days in a row, the, the uh, airline will be put out of business. But with smoking, we're being too uh, tolerant. Think uh, uh, about this, the, the sadness uh, in families uh, when people die. So I think we are affected. The economic uh, criteria really disappoint me uh, when they're put to the fore in this way. Why is advertising uh, so Im important? Uh, I mean... We've got all these people, 700,000 uh, people dying every year. Well, you need to, they need to get uh, 700,000 new customers. That's the interest of the uh, advertising, and that's why advertising with these slim cigarettes is, uh, uh, is uh, being used so much. And when you see the trend increasing uh, in smoking, I mean, my, my children uh, are not as perfect as I, as I would have liked. Uh, uh, you have to try and uh, keep people out of the uh, risk zone, and uh, the Commission and Linda have given us the right answers. I mean, you can discuss uh, whether the image has to be 50% of the package or 70% of the package. But we need information for uh, young people. They need to be aware of how dangerous it is. We need to uh, be able to say how terrible it is. I don't want to s say too much on e-cigarettes uh, at the moment. There are convincing arguments on both sides. I need some time to think about that and see what's important for me. I keep hearing about all this pirating the tobacco industry. I mean, we've looked into this. Half of illegal uh, cigarettes come from their own production. As soon as they leave uh, their factory, a lot of those products uh, go the illegal route. So they need to make sure those uh, products go down the right route. Then they won't have this problem with illegal uh, products. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Chairman. I'll try and speak to the point. We don't have much time, and I'd like to come to the main points. But I would support what the rapporteur and the shadow rapporteur of the EPP has just said. Obviously, these are the eternal arguments that are put forward time and time again about the jobs that would be affected, that would be threatened, in particular in SMEs. I don't want to go through all of these arguments and I don't want to bring up the genuine statistics that count the deaths in Europe, which we're familiar with. So everybody has said that they want to make smoking less attractive, particularly for young people, stop them from smoking if possible. I agree with that approach on packaging. There are different views on the eff efficacy of advertising, but I agree with the Commission's approach, namely combining imaging and text, 70-75% of the surface of the package. And we have to bear in mind that there's only 10 member states out of the total that actually use these kind of photos as things stand. So I think progress has been made and it's quite balanced. On the contrary, I'd apologise if I'm speaking a bit fast for the interpreters, but on colours and additives and the ban too on products that have to do vani with vanilla and menthol and so on and so forth. I think these are salient points, very important proposals, because we know, and this has been proven by polls, that these are one of the factors that do in fact attract 
people to smoking if uh, people do in fact use uh, this bait to attract people into smoking products cigars pipe tobacco and I'm very worried as well about the exemption for cigarillos and I'd like to see some statistics and perhaps we could look at the Canadian example there they have become bait for young people they've injected new flavors into them and sales have gone up because it became increasingly obvious that very young children aged 6 to 12 were in fact buying these cigarillos they weren't thinking of them as smoking products they were thinking of the flavors so I would say we need to be very careful then electronic cigarettes a very important point which we didn't talk about 10 years ago at all and now we need to they didn't exist then so you can see industry is being highly innovative here but I would like the Commission to be severe when it drafts its Article 18. It's very important that we ensure the health of dosages, but at the same time we have to be in sync with reality. So perhaps I can look further at the question of thresholds. I'm concluding, Chairman. I think it's vital here and now that we in fact are in sync with reality and in particular that we do prevent a situation where over the long term, the industry actually manages to sell more electronic cigarettes to young people, which is something that we should be preventing. Not everything is covered here. I think the basics are, though, and I'll stop there now. Thank you. Satu Hasi. Kiitoksia. Thank you very much. Rapporteur Linda McEvan made things easy for me because basically I can just support the uh, points that she raised. The Commission's proposal is welcome. It is a step in the right direction. And here at Parliament, uh, we feel that the only thing we need to do is tighten it up. I think what's most important here, and especially from the Greens uh, point of view, what we want to see in the directive is the same thing that we see in Australia, i.e. plain packaging. We would like to have packaging where the brand does not appear. In Australia, that's uh, already been implemented. Now, various uh, colleagues have put forth the fact that it's important to prevent young people from starting smoking. And that really is the core issue. If 94% of uh, smokers start before the age of uh, 25 and 70% of uh, those start under the age of 18, then, of course, we need to target marketing um, that um, is directed towards young people. Now, a ban on flavors, that's something that we also support. But also in this area, we'd like to extend that. It shouldn't just be what the Commission stated, i.e., uh, uh, characterizing aromas. Uh, we would like to ban all flavors. We'd like to be a little bit more specific also in the area, area of uh, point of purchase advertising. We think that um, tobacco products should be less visible in those places where they are sold. I think that would lead to a reduction in sales. Uh, we do have examples of this because uh, when people don't see things that they don't uh, get the impulse to purchase them as uh, easily. Now, I've received um, emails from uh, lobbyists for e-cigarettes. In this area, I think it's very in important to strike a balance. Uh, e-cigarettes should be used as a support to stop smoking but e-cigarettes shouldn't be used as a new channel to develop an addiction to nicotine, especially uh, among young people. So I think that 
there should be a limit on the um, amount of nicotine, and if it goes over, it should be a medical product. I don't know, spec. Format. Yeah, it's a little combination of one. Thank you, Chairman. This is a combination of uh, Mr. Callahan's remarks and my, my own. Let me start by saying that we agree with the Commission that the, the major task ahead is to stop young people from starting in the first place, and we need some sort of method to prove to young people that it's uncool to smoke. Uh, a general ban would be the best, but that's impossible. I recognize that. And Linda is right. Why on earth do they tell us two different things from the industry? Obviously, you're not targeting an adult audience when you have chocolate-flavored paper for cigarettes. Obviously, you are targeting young people. We all know we don't need to discuss whether it's damaging to your health to smoke. Everybody knows that. But what is important for me is that the smoking <coughs> is, is, a, is a joy and a pleasure like a, like a nice glass of whiskey. It's a hobby for adults. I think you could describe it like that. And if that, if we can turn the discussion over in that register, maybe we'll have a reasonable discussion. This is my case. If you, if you ban all advertisement, if you ban every possibility for a, if you take away every possibility for a company to show what their product is, it's distortion of competition. And quite another matter that nobody mentioned. We still subsidize tobacco culture in Europe. The growing of tobacco is subsidized in Europe. We ought to stop that as well, I guess. And here's another one. Why is snuff and uh, cigars and cigarillos, why are they treated the same way as uh, cigarettes? Because the cigarettes and all the additives, all the damaging additives, that's where the problem is. If it's just the cigars made of tobacco. Nobody will smoke 20 or 40 a day, least of all 12-year-olds. So Linda is right. They speak with two tongues from the industry. They are telling us two different things and we need to stop this candy cigarettes. We call them candy cigarettes in Denmark. And all, we need to ban them and all the additives they add to them because that is the major problem to not very many people smoke the regular product because that's not considered cool by the young people Rosbach und als nächstes spricht Anna Rosbach Mission to the tobacco product directive was broadly that it was ambitious and it was a very ambitious proposal and a step in the right direction. I now, however, believe that the European Parliament has a responsibility to take the extra steps required to consolidate the, the potential positive effects that the Tobacco Product Directive will have, especially for its target, which is young people. So I believe we need to go further. And whilst the proposal from the Commission of a mandatory 75% of the cigarette pack to be covered with picture and text warning is certainly to be welcomed without doubt. I am disappointed that they did not go any further and follow the Australian example. I will be pushing for an ambitious but by no means unattainable 100% standardised packaging of cigarettes. With regards to additives and flavouring, I believe the Commission's proposals for test panels to be determined whether a cigarette has a so-called characterising flavouring to be insufficient and overly complicated. The implementation of their suggestion will be complex and bureaucratic. It is my belief that we should go further than this and ban all additives and flavouring. Any substance which is superfluous to the manufacturing process but encourages cigarettes use in people by improving the product's palatability and attractiveness 
which would otherwise deter young people from starting or sustaining their cigarette habit, should, in my opinion, be banned. It should look like and taste like tobacco, as the Commissioner has said. On the issue of a cross-border distance sale, we believe that a cross-border distance sales ban would surely be much more simpler than the current text within the proposal. It would save having to implement any age variation system, which I fail to see how it would work in practical terms. Tobacco is a unique product which must be treated as such. With regards to the issue of e-cigarettes, which unfortunately has started to overtake the debate, I do not believe that the current regulation which they come under, the General Products Regulation, is sufficient. There have been incidents of mislabeling of the product and the levels of nicotine uh, on these e-cigarettes. A medicines regulation would ensure that these products would uh, be of good quality, they would be safe to use, whilst preventing them from being sold or promoted to children and non-smokers. We need to make sure that what we are allowing into the market is safe, if used in the correct way, and users know the dangers if um, left unattended and in the hands of children. And we know if they are left in the hands of children, they can be lethal. Finally, we'd like to point out our regret that there was no mention of the restrictions on point of sale advertising in the proposal, and that was mentioned earlier by one of the contributors to one of the MEPs. Um, there is growing evidence that shows, if I could just talk two seconds just to say to you about Ireland, where tobacco products have been out of sight in retail outlets, and that can Thanks. impact upon the normalisation of smokers and tobacco products. Thank you. Please stick to the speaking time, otherwise it's not possible to give everybody the floor. Glennis Wilmot, 1 minute 30, please. Thanks very much. I agree that we should get rid of all branding from packaging and restrict the use of all flavouring and additives if you want to make it less attractive to young people, but I do want to concentrate on e-cigarettes. At the moment, they're regulated under, as a consumer product, and it's crazy that a product that has such a highly addictive drug is no more regulated than something like this pen I'm holding in my hand. It's, in all likelihood, it's true that e-cigarettes will be less dangerous than the real thing, but we really don't know. European consumers expect, expect the products they buy to be tested and proved to be safe. We must regulate e-cigarettes just as we regulate other nicotine-containing products as a pharmaceutical product. That would ensure they have to undergo thorough assessment as to their safety and efficacy at helping smokers quit, because that's what they should be used for. It's worrying the way they are marketed. Adverts have already been on British TV. Increased use of e-cigarettes indoors, particularly in front of children, normalises smoking again on doing all the good work that's been done. If e-cigarettes are a helpful tool to quit, that's fantastic. But they should be regulated and marketed the same as nicotine patches, sprays and gums as a smoking cessation product. This isn't about banning them, it's about closing loopholes. We have to take our responsibilities seriously. Thank you. Vielen Dank. Rebecca Taylor und danach Boguslav Sonic. Rebecca Taylor, 1 minute 30. Thank you. Um, I would um, agree with the rapporteur and with um, others who have spoken in relation to the changes in packaging and labelling, so I won't go into those in detail. I would just add one point here that I'm puzzled as to why the proposal apparently bans composite cans as a form of loose tobacco packaging. This is Article 13, because it allows only for pouches weighing at least 40 grams. Um, if the tins uh, contain more than 40 grams and can meet the labelling and traceability requirements, I'm unsure as to why they shouldn't be allowed. Um, in relation to the nicotine-containing products such as e-cigarettes, um, there is evidence in the UK from the National Institute of Clinical Excellence and from ASH, which is an anti-smoking charity, that they can um, act as a form of harm reduction. I think they clearly do need to be regulated, but I'm not sure if going a whole hog for a pharmaceutical marketing authorization is the best way forward. We need to make sure that they are not attractive to non-smokers and that we do not renormalize smoking. So we could perhaps look at restrictions on advertising and promotion and perhaps member states might want to ban them in public places as cigarettes are banned. And I would also like to see minimum age restrictions for these nicotine containing products in line with the member states. Um, restrictions for tobacco and perhaps warnings, something like may damage your health, because right now we are not sure about that. Thank you. 
Vielen Dank, Bogislav Sonik. Und danach kann sich Peter Liese fertig machen. Bogislav Sonik, eine Minute 30. Minute 30. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to an aspect that has not been mentioned so far in the proposal of the Commission. The European Commission suggests that there should be a limit to the thickness of, the, of a cigarette, the diameter. Uh, why the diameter only and not the length, um, one might ask. And this uh, statement is uh, one of those that uh, are frequently quoted by those who want to ridicule, ridiculize the European Union, who say that we legislate the curvature of a banana. I fear that here we are going a bit too far in terms of intervening into the market. But I have two questions to the European Commission. Uh, there must be a reason uh, for, the, uh, for which the United States and Canada decided to um, keep the mental-flavored cigarette, although they are very restrictive in other aspects. Perhaps uh, we should look at this aspect again, because mental cigarettes um, are very present on the market. And my third question, the European Commission said that they would propose new methods for combat combating illegal trade in cigarettes. Die Kollegin Prana Nova, Peter Liese, eine Minute 30. Yeah. One minute 30. Danke an Linda thank you, Chair. Thank you to Linda McEvan and to the representative of the EPP. I essentially support the Commission's proposal, even though there are aspects which have to be looked at again. For example, standard sizing for packets, do we really need that? And I th think that Commissioner Borges has suggested a good compromise. E-cigarettes shouldn't be banned, and they shouldn't be banned through the back door either. I think that e-cigarettes could help some smokers to quit, but we do need regulation. Anna Rosberg's suggestion on s subsidies, not Everyone has heard this, but last week there's a problem with Italian interpretation. I don't see any Italian colleagues here. There's no interpretation from Italian. Is that okay with everyone? In that case, please carry on. Seeing as there aren't any Italian speakers, we can do without Italian interpretation. The Italian lobbyists can all understand English, so I'll just carry on. On tobacco subsidies, not everyone has been following this in detail, but last week this Parliament voted to bring back subsidies, and we hope that the Council will get rid of this. And finally, on protection against passive smoking. Here, I think we can still improve on the Commission's proposal. And this should be dealt with in comitology. I think there's something that should be in the legal text. The text is all about the danger for smokers themselves, and that's important, so as to stop young people starting smoking. But I would like to put more emphasis on the danger for non-smokers, including especially on children. In many countries there are cases of the, of, the still, of the premature births or childhood mortality which are linked to smoking. More emphasis should be put on this and it shouldn't just be left to comatology. Thanks, that's all. Next colleague Pananova and Demis Merker. One minute thirty. President, uh, I will be the first one to declare a conflict of interest uh, because I'm a medical doctor and tobacco kills, harms, disables and uh, uh, causes dependency. As a medical doctor, I'm against all this. So I'm against tobacco and I'm for reduction of tobacco and I will call the colleagues that will uh, support the same cause or the opposite cause to declare a conflict of interest if they intend to claim that they are protecting the workers, the farmers or whoever they think uh, they are protecting in uh, reducing the... Now, after saying this, 
I would like to repeat and to support Linda McEvan and the Commission that the aim of this directive is to reduce by, by 2 percent the smokers and to save 2.5 million lives in five years. If this is not enough to sacrifice 5,000 or reduction of 5,000 worker places, I don't know what else uh, is worthy. Everything that Linda has shown is not aimed to reduce and is not showing any intention of the uh, industry to cooperate. This is to attract, and this is causing profits and revenues for companies and shareholders. This is what we would like to reduce, and that's please to all colleagues and lobbies which are turning around the parliament and trying to meet all of us and to uh, massage our ideas, views uh, towards this dossier. If they claim that these measures are not working, they should propose measures which are more restrictive so that we will achieve the final goal, 2% reduction of small colors, 2.5 million lives saved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marek Demesmerka, or then after Yolanta Hipna. Thank you, Voorzitter. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to take this opportunity to uh, give my support uh, to the propo proposal and to the rapporteur. This is a public health issue, and that is uh, that means that citizens are really at the core, and we need to be able to make a difference. Uh, now, this is a proposal that we have been uh, waiting for for a long time, and I do agree that tobacco should look like tobacco and not t taste like anything or look like anything else, especially when we're uh, targeting young people. Now, we have had a ban on um, uh, public um, smoking, and between 2005 to 2011, we've from 39 to 33 percent in the amount of smoking uh, among young people, but that level is still too high, and there is room for improvement, and that's why we need some measures to be taken urgently. Now, we would like to congratulate the Irish presidency as well, and it was really impressive and uh, convincing to see how they um, defended these issues uh, during the hearing uh, last month, and I heard what the Irish minister had to say. What if tobacco were a new product? It would never be allowed to be put on the market uh, because it's too harmful and too deadly. Thank you, Chairman. As uh, my colleague has already mentioned, uh, the main objective is to ensure better health of European citizens and, make sh and making sure that young people do not take up smoking. Uh, there are some elements which are missing in the proposal by the European Commission because we are not talking about education. Without uh, adequate education, we will not make steps further forward. And secondly, I hear that we keep talking about subsidiarity, but uh, for instance, in uh, different member states, we have different uh, uh, limit, age limits uh, concerning uh, the availability of tobacco products. So perhaps we should introduce an overall limit of 18 years of age. Secondly, we keep talking about uh, smokers being ill and falling ill at a later stage. Why do we not have an, a mandatory uh, health insurance system for smokers? And finally, uh, remote sales. It is very easy to buy uh, cigarettes over the Internet. And uh, you just enter your age. If you're 14, you can just enter that you're 21. Who's going to check that? Who's going to monitor that? So, ladies and gentlemen, either we really want to fight with uh, tobacco habit, if we either, either we want to make sure that our young people are healthy or not. And I certainly agree that there should be no uh, excessively attractive uh, packaging, uh, looking like candy, looking like uh, lipstick. Uh, cigarette should be a cigarette, regardless of the packaging. Monsieur le Président, chers collègues, l'industrie du tabac de... Well, the uh, tobacco industry for a long time has gone beyond uh, its uh, commercial uh, purpose uh, and uh, to behave in a very unfortunately uh, criminal way. And I think that's just uh, calling a spade a spade. Uh, we have uh, six million victims of tobacco deaths in uh, uh, the world, and we can see that going up to eight million in 2030. 
And in order to reverse the trend, we need to take some very strict measures. But we policymakers need to be self-critical. We need to stop the hypocrisy, hypocrisy among uh, po politicians. Uh, and we need to stop having an attitude which I would qualify as be uh, a clientelist uh, approach, which is highly irresponsible. And so uh, this directive, uh, as put by the Commission and supported by our rapporteur, is uh, welcome. Now, I would like to make some uh, amendments to the text to strengthen and extend uh, the scope of the directive to all tobacco products, uh, including aromas, uh, uh, advertising, authorizing member states uh, to uh, increase the size of health warnings, and also uh, banning the authorization of uh, derived uh, products uh, and uh, other dangerous products. Thank you. Uh, Milan Kabanov or danach Pavel Pok. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I agree with most of what has been said about the negative impact of tobacco on health. I am a medical doctor and obviously I understand. And I also support all measures to protect minors and children against all drugs, not only tobacco products. But health politics, policy of the European Union should not be governed by decisions only which comes only from Brussels, if there is no reason for that. And there are many who agree with me. The government of the Czech Republic, the Senate, the Parliament, that have already adopted decisions. The rapporteur and other speakers clearly said that member states are capable of taking efficient decisions to protect their citizens from tobacco negative effects. There is only a political reason to harmonize this protection from Brussels. Member states, their parliaments are not less smart or less responsible than we are here in Brussels. Thank you, Chair. I would like to thank uh, the reporter because she is very brave and we will need a lot of bravery in the future because the tobacco lobbyists are very brave. Not only they uh, visited the parliament, but they also sent us a lot of letters. Um, some uh, parliaments uh, say that there is a problem with the subsidiarity principles, and you have heard also my predecessor, what he has said about it. It is uh, very easy. Every year, 700,000 people or 700,000 consumers die every year and that's why the tobacco industry needs new consumers. There are special flavors uh, which are easier to smoke so that's easier for new for young people to initiate uh, to start smoking. So there are a lot of marketing tricks we need to curb them. There is a new high quality proposal of the Commission and this is the Envy Committee who is responsible to consider this Commission proposal. So we should really fight for the interests of uh, European citizens in the area of public health. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Well, anything that has to do with health should be supported. I think every thing has been stated, but I would like to um, stress something that I said when the Commissioner was here. The text of the directive uh, should be harmonized uh, with the protocol of uh, illegal uh, tobacco products, uh, and Article 14 of the directive uh, does not l live up to that. The protocol was uh, adopted in November 2012, was adopted uh, by 26 of 27 member states uh, with uh, more than 140 other uh, states in the world. So I think it's very important to harmonize those texts. We need to have a single code for um, tobacco as an active uh, ingredient, and that should be um, administered uh, by administrations. And I think we should also focus on uh, uh, having 
ra awareness raising and campaigns in schools. Now, on the subsidies uh, that Dr. Lisa talked about, uh, that is a subsidy to uh, tobacco crops. Uh, it'd be like uh, sugar beet uh, crop uh, subsidies, and sugar is also bad for your health. Sophie Oconi. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Chairman, colleagues. Uh, could I ask for a little bit more time because uh, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Mrs. Grostet, and then uh, I would uh, add some of my own comments. A minute and a half. Okay, I'll take what I can get. Now, we need to really cut to the chase of the problem, and uh, what we've uh, seen is that uh, you know we've seen the figures. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Grotstedt had to leave uh, for another meeting, uh, but she would like to look at uh, this in a little bit more thematic way. Prevention campaigns in member states, uh, that's very important, uh, and raise, awareness raising is something that uh, we should um, use in a very targeted way and look uh, more than what we have been doing now and try to really target young people because they're the ones who are the most affected by tobacco. Uh, mass media campaigns uh, could um, have a very positive cost-benefit uh, ratio in terms of uh, health benefits and also in terms of uh, fighting um, tobacco use. So, so I think we should uh, take a look at that aspect. And personally speaking, I would talk about uh, teaching kids at school we should impose this on member states. They should have anti-tobacco campaigns in schools. They should explain to young people how dangerous it is. E-cigarettes, the European Commission should uh, say, well, there should be scientific studies uh, that should uh, frame this type of product in a better way. In some member states, this is considered as uh, cigarettes, and in other member states, they're considered as a, medic a medical device. Uh, and so we need to have more information labeling, cha Chairman, I'm uh, summing up. Well, I, I don't think cha pictures will change things. Uh, the tobacco is industry send sells uh, fantastic um, covers uh, that allow you to hide the cigarette package. So I think uh, the solution would be to uh, have a higher price for tobacco. Zehn Minuten und die Kommission muss nämlich noch antworten auf die aufgeworfenen Fragen und die Berichterstattung auch noch hier in einem Gebühr. We've got ten minutes left and uh, we've got the rapporteur that needs to reply. It's been a very good uh, debate. Karl-Heinz Florenz uh, mentioned uh, e-cigarettes and the st uh, steam apparatus. Here we're talking about a tobacco product directive. I'm not sure whether the product is properly categorized in this directive. Perhaps the Commission can say something about this. I heard in recent uh, uh, weeks that many uh, 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 ex-smokers uh, uh, are in this category rather than young people, people. The tobacco industry obviously has a massive interest in this uh, product uh, being uh, removed from the market as quickly as possible. I mean, the, is, is it a product ban, question to the Commission, or is it going to be a, a product ban? It's not real, really uh, clear to me, but uh, Linda said that there's going to be a study commissioned and um, I think uh, many uh, colleagues are saying the same thing. It's about a commercial interest, uh, uh, but there are questions surrounding this. So it was a very good uh, debate. So, Mr. Dominic Schnickels, you have five minutes, and then the rapporteurs will have five minutes. I know it's almost impossible. Um, question. Why uh, can governments go further to plain packaging? The answer is yes. Uh, recital 41 uh, explicitly confirms this, and on the basis of Article 24, Paragraph 3, it should be possible. Um, why do we regulate snooze? Uh, well, um, the exemption of the Swedish government only uh, uh, relates to the placing on the market and not to the regulation of the tobacco products. 
Therefore, in the current directive, we regulate labeling and uh, reporting provisions, but we do, um, and we just extend the same type of regulation now uh, to ingredients. Uh, Cross-border distance sales should we not ban it. Uh, from an economic perspective, cross-border distance sales do not make any sense, so in that respect, uh, you have my full confirmation. Um, but um, we think that the prohibition uh, might be actually the less effective means uh, to control um, such, such things, um, and it might also be um, uh, better compatible, our proposal, with the internal uh, market and the legal basis. Electronic cigarettes, I think a point that was made by many uh, colleagues. Um, why, why is this under the Tobacco Products Directive? Well, um, the nicotine in the electronic cigarettes is gained from tobacco. Um, it is a substitution product for tobacco. Um, and um, so we, we, we feel that um, actually it, it belongs into this directive. Um, there are currently a lot of safety concerns. That's why we need to act. Um, uh, Linda McEvan has pointed to the RAPEX alerts, and um, this, this is really a big concern. Children could die if they drink the cartridge of the nicotine. Um, the real problem with electronic cigarettes is that maybe in the past it was a, um, a, a means that was only taken by established smokers who wanted to get rid of it. But nowadays we see a trend that this gets into, uh, develops into a lifestyle product, um, and that is a big problem. Um, you are probably all aware of the Hungarian study. In May 2012, 13 to 15% of the Hungarian uh, youngsters um, have used electronic cigarettes, many of those uh, non-smokers. The substance nicotine is addictive, and they would also uh, become addictive and then maybe switch to elect uh, from electronic cigarettes to real cigarettes, which would be uh, uh, devastating. Um, a similar study in Poland says 20% of the Polish youngsters um, have experimented with uh, electronic cigarettes. A uh, last point, um, we, um, we do not want to see um, electronic cigarettes disappearing from the market to the contrary. If this is an effective means to regulate, um, um, to, to help smokers to get away from smoking, well, we should, we should support that. But we just feel it should be under a regulated and safe environment. And the safe environment, an established regulatory framework for us is the pharma legislation. This would also ensure a level playing field uh, for the nicotine replacement therapies. Um, they have to undergo subject um, pharmaceutical authorizations. Uh, it's just a question of um, administering the product, um, how you get the nicotine. That's the only difference between an electronic cigarette, a spray, and a patch. Um, then there was uh, a few questions on, on SLIMs. Um, I think uh, SLIM is one of the big uh, strategies of the industry to, um, to get to young people. 50% um, increase in the last uh, four or five years in sales of SLIM, so contrary against the trend. Um, and um, it is, I think, pretty obvious that products like this, which look like lipsticks, which are slim, which suggest femininity, um, which uh, seduce, um, which suggest maybe weight loss, uh, elegance, uh, this is targeted to young people, and uh, we should not uh, support that. Um, then um, electronic cigarettes. Yeah, cigarillos is true, is, is, uh, could be a potential um, area of circumvention, um, but... Um, we, we believe that we have a measure uh, to react to this. If the sales in cigarillos increase, we can uh, react. A question on display bans from a few delegations, uh, from a few delegates, sorry, um, in the council mode here. Um, uh, display ban, uh, yes, it could be a very useful measure, but we believe this is a tobacco products, it's a products directive and not um, uh, um, uh, directive uh, um, arranging the sales arrangements, and therefore it doesn't really fit into this one. Um, if at all, it would fit probably under the advertising directive. Um, can we not regulate um, advertising more? Well, for the same reasons that I've already given. This is a products directive and not a sales arrangement directive. I think it doesn't belong here. <clears throat> then there was a question um, on uh, composite uh, cans. Uh, the reason why we have uh, suggested uh, pouches for roll your own tobacco only um, are twofold. First, uh, um, we, try, we have a different uh, regulation here for pipe tobacco and roll your own in our directive, and I think it is good if also different um, sort of um, containers are used, uh, uh, roll your own pouches and pipe tobacco cans. Um, secondly, when you go out, uh, you will not carry around with you as a youngster a 200-gram um, box. Um, 
Last point maybe that I would like to make. Um, age restrictions, can we introduce them uh, through a legal basis, Article 114? We believe that is not the case, and therefore uh, this is member states' competence, and we should not at the EU level act on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. You also mentioned the subject of liquids and what happens if, if someone drinks them. There's also the danger of poisoning if uh, cigarette ends are left in playgrounds because they because but if we compare e-cigarettes to uh, cigarettes, then we should ban cigarettes outright as well. The report, the rapporteur. Yeah, Chair, I'll be brief now because um, we've had a long debate. Thank you, colleagues, for most, most people seem to be supporting the legislation. There are some questions we need to resolve. I can see that the e-cigarettes, we need a thorough debate and we need to, have, to hear experts because we want to get the right kind of regulation on these products. We have our studies, so maybe we should organise, maybe I'll organise a workshop or something for colleagues to come on the e-cigarettes. On the e um, on the internet sales, um, Mrs. Hibner mentioned, I agree that internet sales are a problem. Do you know that in some countries, and I know in Germany, for example, you can get free cigarettes on the internet, you can sign up and get cigarettes sent to you. In, I heard that in some other countries, like in Greece, we have cigarettes given out at nightclubs to young people. So this is how the industry helps stop young people smoking. And I think these are issues we should look at very seriously. Um, on menthol, uh, Mr. Zonick asked about menthol. He asked, why did, Canada, why did Canada and the U.S. not ban menthol? Well, I don't know about Canada, but I have spoken to people in the United States. In the United States, frankly, the reason why the FDA didn't eventually ban menthol was because of lobbying, not because they had any scientific reason not to do so. In fact, the scientific committee in the U.S. recommended that Menthol is another flavour. And there is evidence about menthol from doctors, and we should listen to that evidence, that menthol makes cigarettes more palatable. It also helps them they be inhaled more deeply, the tobacco smoke. And also we, there is worrying signs that more and more young people are smoking menthol cigarettes. And, the other, and the other, there is another very worrying development. The US didn't include menthol in the flavourings ban. And now, guess what? We have a legal case. They've been taken to court on WTO rules because by not banning all flavourings, they are therefore discriminating against flavours. And so they've been taken to court by Indonesia on WTO rules. So we should be very careful. If people say, oh, we should just exclude one flavouring, then actually we might actually jeopardise all the legislation on flavourings. And I don't think people here would want to do that. So we should be very wary that we don't allow back, lobbying by a back door to open up and stop us from blocking the flavourings. I know, colleagues, it's a big issue. I know there are some countries which make menthol cigarettes. But please listen. I listen to our doctors here in the audience about the balance of, of these issues. And... Um, and f finally, just to say that um, um, now I think I've covered everything. Oh, yeah, information campaigns. I hear a lot of colleagues saying we need more information campaigns, we need more of this. Of course we need more of these things as well. But we don't have the power, Mrs. Alconi, to instruct governments to have education for children. The EU does not have that competence. So let's not pretend it does. Let's say this is what we can do here. Picture warnings, yes, they won't stop all young people smoking. Nobody's claiming they will. Nobody's saying that they, oh, they block, but they are, all the research from doctors, from health professionals, from the public bodies show they do have an impact on some young people. And some young people mean some young lives. And if we can stop now, in this period, fewer young people smoking, in 10 years they won't become smokers because as we heard from the Commission, 94% start before their 25th birthday. You and I are unlikely to start smoking tomorrow. We're not going to say, oh, I'll have a cigarette. I've got a bag full of cigarettes here, but I'm not remotely tempted. Um, so let's not be diverted into, oh, we could do this instead. Let's do that as well. Let's have a comprehensive tobacco control system across Europe. But let's not say, let's not bother doing this because we could do that. Let's not listen to the lobbyists who are working very hard to make us listen to that message. This is what we can do here as MEPs. So let us do what we can do. Let governments do what they can do. Let's have a comprehensive um, tobacco products um, um, legislation. Vielen Dank. And Thank you. An excellent conclusion. 
wir sehen uns alle wieder. We will meet again at 3 p.m. The agenda has already been decided on, and this point is finished. And we have the following timetable. Deadline for amendments is the 28th of March. In the Environment Committee, we'll be talking about this on the 24th and 25th of April. Uh, actually, no, the 6th of May. It's the 6th of it's the 6th of May that's the closing date for amendments. We will still have a debate on the 29th and 30th of May. And on the 10th and 11th of July, we'll vote in the Environment Committee, and we're expecting to vote in plenary in September. Thank you for your attention in listening to this important information. Enjoy your lunch, and see you back here at 3. The meeting is adjourned. Let's um, ask... Let us ask the Commission to, um, uh, to present on this very serious topic um, and uh, pick up some of those points. So I'm going to invite Mr. Rich to, uh, uh, to just present his, uh, the, the position on the, on the strategy behind the revision of the Tobacco Products Directive. So I'll hand you the floor. Other phenomena on the market, uh, new nicotine uh, contained products, I'm referring mainly to the so-called uh, electronic or electric cigarettes. Uh, we also like to establish the nicotine threshold, uh, threshold uh, which basically uh, means that, that those products has to be, uh, has to apply the pharmaceutical um, uh, legislation. Nicotine today, nicotine products already regulated, just mentioned, uh, patches or, or chewing gum that, that this is uh, already uh, on sale in, 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 in distribution of pharmaceuticals. So we like to bring those products closer to the, to the, to the pharmaceutical legislation. Briefly, I know, Mr. Chairman, you said two minutes. I'm trying to be brief um, on e-cigarettes. The issue of e-cigarettes, is something, a completely new product now that is out there since... since uh, and you've got one there. That's, that's very interesting. Um, I happened to tweet, actually, in the, in the, the hearing in the, in the Environment Committee, and I got so much abuse, actually, from people who, um, uh, about the e-cigarette issue, which I found quite, quite curious. Therefore, um, I think your explanation today about why, about the certain levels, and maybe we, people need to understand that a little bit more, because um, once you start to look at the e-cigarette uh, issue, um, unlike nicotine patches and gums, they're not regulated like med, and, and therefore there are no rules, and also there are no rules in e-cigarettes across the single market uh, either. So, um, and, and, and I know that, um, you know, there's a lot of lack of research on e-cigarettes, and we can't, you know, we need, to, we need to look at that too. But I do think that um, um, these cigarettes should be regulated and we need to make sure that we can get that balance to kind of help those who are using them to stop smoking but also this issue about the quantity of nicotine. We also don't know what happens to people's health with nicotine vapour and this is something I find quite astounding and also the fact that the way that they're being marketed as well in particular about, how, about um, people you know, starting um, smoking. So the Tapada Products Directive Review has been long overdue and I believe that the alterations uh, will be a positive change for consumer policy but I, I, I'm, I'm, I look forward to the further debate and um, I, um, I, I welcome this initiative. Thank you. Uh, good. Thank you very much. Indeed, my understanding, and maybe this is something that we'll pick up, is that e-cigarettes are going to be regulated by the Medical Devices Directive, which we're currently examining, because that's how they're being treated. But anyway, that will perhaps come up later. Mr. Schmidt. Um, uh, it's not reasonable that you can... Uh, have cigarettes with a taste of piña colada or strawberries. And I, I'm coming again to, sometimes it's difficult to be a liberal. Uh, well, I think it was John Manning Keynes who said, in the long run, we are all liberals. But perhaps he said something else, but anyway. In the long run, we'll all be dead. Well, I, I knew that. I tried to be funny. I'm not that witty as the British, but anyway. And I also would like to stress, I, I don't know, uh, if there is anyone here who voted for introducing tobacco subsidizes last week, if someone of you is doing uh, what, what pushing the wrong button, 
I think you have almost nothing to say in this directive, I must admit. I'm, I'm, I'm very much against double standard, and I think we try to. Now I'm coming to uh, uh, the end. <laughs> the snooze. The snooze. And I, I think there's a hole, actually, in the Commission's logic. Uh, and, and my view has always been, keep your hands off the snooze. We can, we can deal it with ourselves. And, and if you're trying to do that, you will mess up things. And that Good. Mr. Engstrom. Now, I'm Swedish. <coughs> uh, yeah, you can, guess where, you can guess where this is leading. Now, Sweden, uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you look at smoking prevalence, uh, the, aver the average in Europe, in the EU countries, is 28%. Uh, it varies from 40% in Greece down to uh, one, one single outlier, which is Sweden. Sweden has 13% smoking prevalence. The average in Europe is 28. The second best country in Europe has 23%. So there is a big difference. 700,000 people die every year in Europe from smoking-induced uh, diseases. If the rest of Europe, outside Sweden, could get down to, to, to the Swedish levels, that would be half. We would have saved 350,000 lives a year. And I think a public health benefit like that, then we really must discuss this looking at the science in, in an unprejudiced way. I know, Mark, that we should discuss together in our committee. That, that's what, that is why I would like to ask the chairman to uh, set aside more time, much more time than we had today. Uh, on the 27th of March, uh, I will submit my documents for translation, and the deadline for uh, um, amendments is the 6th of May at noon. Uh, we foresee to vote it in, in IMCO on the 17th or 18th June, and um, uh, the, a vote on, the vote on the, uh, in the plenary, plenary session is foreseen for September 2013. I would like to have, once again, more time for this debate next time. And thank you very much for your attention. We would have much more time available if colleagues were prepared to work on Thursday afternoon. Um, we, we, can't, we could not fill this, to the, this afternoon slot because not everyone was available. Um, so. Um, um, we will discuss the timetable with you, but in view of the importance of this report, it will be very helpful if colleagues could arrange their diaries accordingly so that they are available on Thursday afternoons of committee week to discuss these proposals. Yeah, sorry. Yes, sorry. We're, 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 <laughs> boink. There we go. A little bit of hell round. Thank God we haven't started the show. Um, We've, we've got approximately 45, 50 seconds um, before we start the show. So we're going to bug up and bugger off and we'll be back at 9 o'clock with VT Talk Does the Hears Hour or the Hears Hour Does VT. It's all for comedy relief. Somebody does someone.